If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. We had our good friend, Ben Greenfield. Oh, you're about to hear a good oh, little man. episode here. Visit us here in San Jose. He actually spent the night at my house, uh, and we made sweet, sweet love. Yeah, no, I believe you. Uh, <laughs> you guys really bonded. You were the, what did he say? He's the little spoon? No, he's a big spoon. Uh, yeah. Were you little spoon in it? Spoon. Mm-hmm. So Ben. No, Ben, <laughs> ben is uh, one of our, I mean- Great guy. Like we first awesome we saw him because he was racing in the Spartan race when he was up here, mm. and uh, we went to see him up there. Then we hung out with him. We had a great dinner with him. We um, maybe drank a little bit. I don't know. You might hear that in the episode coming up. But we had a great time with Ben. He's uh, he's a very intelligent guy. But this episode gets a little deep, right? We talk about Ben, his life. We talk about more personal stuff. I can't wait. A little wait. bit of fitness. I was not here, so I'm, I can't wait to listen to this one. Oh, yeah, that's right. He sat in your chair, Justin. I know. I'm it pretty smells sure different from here I asked out. him questions that nobody's ever asked him before and got him talking about things that he's never talked about on the mm-hmm. podcast before. So he's, he's one of our favorite uh, podcasters. You can find his podcast. It's called Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast. His website is bengreenfieldfitness.com. His Instagram is at Ben Greenfield Fitness, and he's released a new energy bar. Now, we're not big fans of bars and stuff like that, but I'll tell you what, I kind of like his bar. Um, it's minimally processed. It's got good ingredients. It actually tastes pretty good, and we bullied him to giving uh, our fans a discount. That's, and not only did we bully him into giving us <laughs> our fans a discount, a better discount than you can get anywhere else, because the affiliate code uh, was supposed yeah. to be 10%, and I strong-armed him, strong-armed him into giving us more than anybody <laughs> so else. So he hooked it up. Mind Pump, if you go to check out, make sure you put Mind Pump, no space, all one word. That's it's impressive, because he has like a gorilla grip. percent discount on those bars. I love them. I've been using them consistently now. So here we go. Uh, here we are talking to Ben Greenfield. Can you hear Ben? My blue light blockers are cutting off blood flow to my ears. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Headphones well, why are, uh, uh, first of all, you're in the funny chair. That's Justin's chair right there. This chair does smell a little funny. It does. <laughs> it's, Son of a bitch. <laughs> this is true. Dude, tell tell Ben about how, how Justin Heck got his feelings so, hurt. So, <laughs> uh, what, yeah, what, Saturday when we come over to see you at uh, Spartan Race, right? Mm-hmm. And you introduced us to Hunter. And that that really hard, super steep Spartan race that I did that you guys didn't do. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. We, yeah, you, yeah right. Yeah, definitely not. First of all, we ran out of gas on the way there, <laughs> so that's our that's right there. That mm-hmm. tells you we shouldn't compete in a Spartan race. <laughs> it's a classic Spartan race excuse. Exactly. So we I get, was going to do the barbed you know, wire, but I ran out of gas. Ironically, okay, when we were at the Seven Eleven that was right across the street from there, we saw a bunch of like Spartan wannabes or whatever, they're like the people that look like they're going to do the race, but they don't. I didn't know that. I didn't know this existed until this moment, because like a whole crowd of them. And I told Taylor, I said, "Oh, hey, bro, let's go over, just interview these guys. They probably just finished the race. They're coming over <laughs> yeah, to. That's right. Were they like climbing on the gas pumps? <laughs> they were no, but they were. There was a the whole mob of them. You know, they had the tall socks and they had the headbands oh, yeah. and the Spartan shirts on and stuff. So one and one of them even had like the war paint on his face, all that stuff. And I go, "Hey man, did you just race?" He goes, "Oh no, I missed my time. I missed." So he didn't, <laughs> and there was a whole group. What do you of mean? Them. I missed my time. He didn't. You were this. No, when, you, you he, get like an allotted time that you're supposed to start the race. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's, no, this, like, that's like the dream I had. You know, like the dream where you go to school in your underwear or like yeah. your teeth are falling out or you can fly. I've had that dream before where you sleep through the race or you miss your start time. I, I just thought how, it was, so how you did know you, do, you care about the race. How man. did you do, by the way? How did you do in this last I one? I sucked. Really? What yeah. does that mean for you? Because I feel like sucked in like how for many, you yeah, means we're, we're, like, I know you oh, know I only place. ran like the second fastest person. No, I, didn't, I didn't run very fast. That happened to me in the race before that, too. I, we were talking about this beforehand. Oh, I, yeah. So you were I, telling me I about think, your SI joint I did, pain. A, I did a whole new protocol this winter of lifting and gymnastics and sitting on airplanes. And I think it's possibly <laughs> that last one. Because I because in, in the Seattle race, I had just flown in from... Uh, I, forget, I, I was back east. And then for this race, I just flew in from Bulgaria. I'm not sandbagging, but I think that, that sitting for like 24 hours before the race uh, affects your biomechanics. Is it always the same Signific- side? And I warm up. Yeah, it's always the right side. It's always the yeah. right SI joint. Yeah. There's pro- I, think, I think sitting for that long. There's a recruitment pattern issue. That's I mean, that's 100% what it's pointing to. But the hard thing about athletes like yourself, because you're so highly handsome. trained, you're so, uh, <laughs> yes, handsome, but that has nothing to do with what I'm about to say. You're it's also nice. very fit, is that your body is exceptional at compensating. So it, it can be very difficult to identify 
a recruitment pattern issue on someone like you. Yeah, plus my right testicle is just fucking huge. Yes. It's, it's, <laughs> that's the other part. That's the other part. <laughs> that's the other part. <laughs> my right, I get the chafing on my yeah. right thigh. So, so, sitting long, so sitting on for long periods of time hurts the SI joint for you. Apparently, I, I, I th- that's the only variable that was the same. Like, like mm. if, if I look at both my last races, like they're not that they weren't that great. So, no, I wasn't happy with. That. I hope how, Brink can no. see you tomorrow. Then how no. how competitive do you? What feel? I did like was how you guys showed up and you all leapt over the fence to the race, but Sal, no, did not. <laughs> I'm glad he tiny, called you out. Tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny little fence, and they're standing there talking. I'm like, why don't you guys come over here into like the into like the race? And I was like, okay, and he just like kind of you know steps over the fence, and then. <laughs> Uh, who who was I think I think Justin yeah, le- leaps over the fa- and then Sal walks the hundred yards like <laughs> around the bathroom. <laughs> You're at a Spartan race. It's okay to jump. It's, the fence. You know, the funny thing is, it's the it's entrance is the entrance is right over there. I saw. I don't understand why I need me, to jump over me, the fence when I can just t- go into you, the entrance. Let me tell you. I feel how like much, I made the smart decision. Let me tell you how much I know my boy. Is I saw, <laughs> I saw for a moment there, he thought about it. Like mm-hmm. he looked at the fence, he saw me hop over, <laughs> then he saw Justin and he thought, oh, what I if get, my pants catch? What if I don't make it? <laughs> Crossed his mind just for a split second. There was a split second Here, there. That, surrounded by <laughs> obstacle course racers, yes. I don't want to be the guy. Exactly. Uh, can you imagine how embarrassing that would be? The and there's, a bit of, there's a bit of it very, that's, that, that's smart in his own way right there because he saw that. He's like, if all the places I'm not going to make a fit. He we're out. That guy. Yeah, we're guys, out. Just a hand? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of obstacle race people that are hopping over doing crazy shit. Sal is not going to fail at that. Like, splinter? I'd rather be made, I know him, I'd rather be made fun of for walking around the fence than actually attempting it the next. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's this one time, dude, that I stepped over the fucking chains at McDonald's and I pulled the whole <laughs> line down with me. But then the funny, everybody came so, down with me. So we go to and watch I the spilled game. nuggets everywhere. We go to watch the game tonight at the bar. Oh yeah, and and I give Sal a hard time, and I kind of jump over the fence to to like get into the bar. And so like <laughs> ten minutes later, I turn around. Sal's getting there, ready to jump over, the, and the security guards come over. They're like, <laughs> "Sir, please, please step down immediately. Step down." <laughs> so they knew they knew that you have a fence problem. They did, and, <laughs> and they did. They, and they, they saw they, they saw Ben do assistance. it, and they're like, "Let that guy do it. He can obviously do it." And then they saw me attempt, and like. Sir, so, yeah, you're gonna hurt yourself because they saw a lawsuit. Come over here. They saw a lawsuit. There's, there's right a ramp. Right. There's a ramp over here on the side that you can use. <laughs> you, tell him, you tell him 48 inches. Okay, please yes. go go around. Listen, I'm extremely agile. I'm extremely <laughs> agile. I'll show you guys one time one day. Now, Ben, you you said you played sports growing up, right? Mm-hmm. What yeah. what what sports did well, you? Well, tennis play? was my main sport. Okay. Yeah, tennis and chess and violin. Mm. You just threw yeah. chess in there. Chess There's competitive there. violin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's competitive. Yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, like your right hand gets really sore. Yeah, I know. They, they, yeah, like the right, the right. Did upper you really bicep. play the violin? I did for 13 years. Wow, you don't have yeah. the. What do they call that and on then, your neck? No, a hickey. No, that <laughs> where they get the violin players will get like leathery like skin, right? From well, yeah, you got to kind of you got to kind of hold it against your shoulder. And yeah, there's like little little. Uh, it, it's uh, like I forget a callus. The name of it. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of it, like there's, there's a term actual, for it. If you actually watch a, a violin concert or you go Google violin concert and and like do a close up of there's like a big pad on yes. the side of the violin. Yes, that's supposed to go up against your shoulder. Yes, but they but also I, I was I w- uh, my family was not wealthy, so the way that we did it was I had a rubber band and a piece of foam that we get from like Joanne's Fabrics and oh, we wow. just kind of rubber band that to the violin so that, that probably saved my ass well, saved my neck I, I, I think the violin is one of my favorite instruments yeah. I played the trumpet oh yeah I played so, the trumpet for three I, years I could see that yeah um, something about my lips uh, what were you going to say I, I have a challenge for us today uh oh yeah, I want to see because this is totally not formal, right? We were violin out. off. No, you know, not a violin off. Oh, I, I want to challenge ourselves to uh, on this fitness podcast to not talk about fitness. This is a fitness podcast. Yeah, as much as we possibly. So we're not allowed to talk about fitness. That's the, yeah. I want to stay away from that day because here's here's a, a perfect opportunity. After we just hung out, we uh, had some drinks, had a good night, and then stopped by the studio. Let's it's, be honest. I just drank like half a bottle of sake, and, <laughs> right. and I'm high. Right. So, what? <laughs> what? So <laughs> what? What are you talking? about Ben anyways continue so, Adam just edamame so I'm gonna I'm gonna like uh, and this would be good because I haven't even asked a question like this from Sal so let's Uh-oh, I want to wow. go back to high school Oh no! For uh, for both you and I want a memory. Oh, this ought to be fun. And we're gonna we're gonna you, do. You know, I was homeschooled K through twelve. That's okay. That's okay. this is fair enough, right here, right? Yeah. So I, I as a, at that age, K through high school, somewhere between freshman senior year and high school, 
I want a, a moment that you remember that was tragic to you, and then a moment to you that was like uh, like probably one of your happiest or exciting moments in that in that time frame. So first one, tragic. So and I want both of you because this wow. is going to ask Sal. I can't even, that comes to mind. I can't this is going to be a really sad podcast. Yeah, no, it doesn't I mean, have to be. Well, what do you mean tragic? Tra- tra- well, I mean like the it time I took mom's pills and tried to commit suicide. <laughs> the time my dog got hit by a car. It does, I do, let me let me rephrase it then. Does that have to be? How about tri- just something that time my that, brother attacked me with a sickle, or the time he sprayed himself that, in the face no, with no, bear mace? Okay, let me back it up. Okay, let me back it up. Tragic was not a good word. <laughs> that was not a good word for that. How about something that that you know that has formed you into the man you are today because of what happened to you? And it doesn't have to be necessarily tragic. It just um, something that has some transformative moments. I, yeah. Okay. That, well, formed me into the man that I am today. Literally, yeah. like the worst injury of my life happened when I was in high school. Oh, what I, happened? I, I had a dirt bike course. My brothers and I were big into dirt biking, and I was on our our home dirt bike course in school because we'd fin- we were homeschooled, right? So we'd get out of school at like ten a.m. and just go up barefoot and play in the dirt and roam the hills the rest of the day. And uh, that's why homeschoolers are so smart. Mm. By the way, this is actually true. By the way, nothing to speaking. do with the pace of the classroom or independent education or anything. It's the mm. fact that we get out of school early and go go and go play. Ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I, I, well, long story short, it, because it really did turn me into the man that I am today, I hit a rock. My front wheel hit a rock at about 45 miles an hour. I flew over the handlebars, and I was all by myself. When I flew over the handlebars at that speed, the only thing that slowed me down was my crotch hitting the handlebars. Ugh. So I got what what they call a testicular contusion, meaning Ooh. that my, my balls within a day were swollen to like the size of grapefruits. Oh, and I remember shit. being really pissed because I couldn't play basketball like <laughs> because I was like waddling like a cowboy for weeks. And like they took me to the doctor and they didn't know if I was going to be able to have babies until I actually had babies. And so it actually was a, a pretty like like for a boy. Yeah. Right. Like to, to basically have your junk just get get They got mangled. crushed that hard. So yeah, were you dude, on the ground just crushed. forever? Because I was on the ground by myself for four hours. Crying. On the field. Yeah. So did, did yeah. it scare you away from and, dirt? And and one of, one of like the guys who was like gardening up in the hills found me. Wow. wow. Yeah. Did did you did it scare you away from riding again, or did you do, do yeah. you not? Ext- yeah. Really, I, I didn't go near a dirt bike for like two years. Really? Yeah. How old were you when this? When My this balls happened? would 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 quiver with fear. <laughs> uh, I was They're 14. right now. I was fourteen. 14 yeah. years old. Wow, that's a horrible age yeah. to get hit and in I had the to nuts. go into the guy. The, uh, what that's when the, they're, the, the, they're uh, really primed, too. Oh, yeah. I remember, yeah. like, the urologist. He was, like, sh- you know, he, sh- he shines, like, the flashlight on your balls to look at the damage. You can, mm-hmm. like, see all the You ever do that before, Adam? No. Where you shine the light and it goes through the other side? It is kind of cool. On Even wh- if you're not injured, what? it's kind of fun. You shine your light. You take the flashlight. You put it up your, your, your ball and you shine through and you, you can, can actually, see. Uh, like, go in the dark sometime and just, like, shine a flashlight at your balls. It's kind of cool. You can, like, see through them because they're kind of transparent. What? Do you hear that, hun? He's, we'll try that. He's like, we've too. been doing that this whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't we'll, know. It was a medical, we'll try that later. That's a, thing. That's a medical thing. Wow. Uh, you know what I think is cool? As I think you, I was just telling Jessica, we were talking about this, how you used to bodybuild. She's like, no, you didn't. And I'm like, yeah, he did. He used to do oh, the me? whole thing. Yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. It, I did. Going from there to this whole, like to where you are now, what was, that's such a drastic switch or change, right? Going from bodybuilding to, like you went to triathlons. Yeah. What, yeah. what what made that switch so quick? What, what, what made I, just, you... I just like to try all sorts of new things. Really? Yeah, that's probably why I'll be like golfing in two years mm. instead of doing obstacle course racing. What, what are you into now? Or paddleboarding yoga. What's what's really getting you excited oh, now? Oh, wow. He was handsome. Honestly. Yeah, there he is in there. Oh, wow. Look at yeah. this picture. How old are you right there? How'd you find that? How old are you right there? Did you just Google? Huh. I'm uh, 22. 22 years old. Oh, you no, look... So I was I was about 210, 215. But you know what? I think in that show I was about 198 because I... I, uh, um, bro, that's a good weight though. I hit stage. I hit stage yeah. at two oh three at USA. So you, we weren't that far off. And your house tall? You six what? Six two. Six two. You so yeah. we're close. I'm like six two and a half. We're like. When yeah, you yeah. train for hypertrophy, you put on muscle pretty easily. Well, I've done the genetic testing mm. to determine like your fast twitch, slow twitch muscle fiber capacity, and and that's a pretty good. They've they've done some interesting studies on that. How if you're built for power or you have higher fast twitch and you train for endurance your results are not efficient at all oh really and vice versa right if so so now I'm, i read I'm i read like, that the type like one and 90, type two can you can act like you should, like the other one though they, they can but okay. if your genetics determine that you'll respond better to a certain type of training mm. you actually do respond better to that so i'm like 90 percent power so i respond really really well to like full body heavy lifts mm. and that's exactly what i don't do to prepare for 
endurance competition. You always train so, for the for the slow twitch stuff, the endurance right, stuff. Right, exactly. But but I'm better oriented for like power, fast twitch. But he, but it does mean that even in training for endurance, I do better if I do do the short, fast stuff. It's just it, it's in many ways not conducive to. So as soon as you start training that goal. way, you just find your your body wants to build. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. How much do you weigh right now? One seventy five. Oh wow. Solid yeah, so like fence a fifth- hopping muscle, baby. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a lot. Of, that, I mean, one from head to toe, dude. That's thirty more pounds of of beef on you right there. That's no joke. Well, I was sponsored by ABB Bodybuilding Shakes. Oh yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> well, right. Those things are fucking horrible. And what was the other? It was ABB Redline was another one. Uh, like like for for caffeine. Yeah, VPX, yeah. right? Yep. 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 And then there was a BSN bar. or yeah, then, then there was a bar. It was like a bar or a cookie that like all the gyms had. I forget what it was. Oh, I know. Um, you're, I oh, you're know talking about the, the, the t- big one thousand, the big one hundred like, protein puck that tasted like chalk. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible. Did you? You were actually like, were you for like real sponsored by ABB or is it just because you you took all their shakes? No, I was sponsored by them for real. Yeah, they, wow. they would actually send like crates and crates of the shakes to my house oh, that stuff was horrible blue thunder did you now, drink that one tell me where you're like yeah. tell me where you're it's at like, like in your 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 business career around this time and what what made you go this route like did you I, did you grow up i was more? in college dude okay like, so I, you're I was just i was just studying exercise physiology and by and and i this was on a dare like somebody just dared me to do a bodybuilding show with them so oh, no i started shit. lifting more and i i didn't drink alcohol and barely ate any carbohydrates for like six months no that, shit. Was, that was how I lost the weight. Yeah. Did you, did you, okay, so you and, were. And, and ate just a crap ton of protein. High, high, high protein, low carb, low fat diet. What, how, oh, you must have felt great. Like tuna fish out of the cans with relish. <laughs> you must have felt amazing. Like slab of meat on the couch. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> to, total sex symbol who couldn't get a boner. Yeah, yeah. testosterone goes plummeting yeah. with something oh, like that. Oh, dude, it's horrible. Yeah. The only other sport that could do that to you was the sport I did after that. I mean, man, triathlon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So there are a few years there. I feel like your balls take a lot of punishment. You smash them. That's true. Then you killed them with bodybuilding. And Don't then, forget he shoves flashlights up there. Well, that's why the, that he does that now, though, with the red well, light. That, the, that was the tragic part, though. What, where, what was the other part of the question? Oh, what was, was your, what was something great that happened? Oh, yeah, yeah. It was fun. Wait, do you have to say the tragic part first? I can't so, even think of anything. It doesn't have no. to be tragic that we fucking backed or Life erased that. It just has to be something <laughs> transformative. I think that, that was Guess perfect. It was great growing up as a rich, Some- spoiled kid who never got hurt, Sal, huh? <laughs> 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 mm. Okay, so it was tragic and then something great. No, get rid of, get rid of tragic, transformative moments okay. in, your, tra- in your high school life. Okay. Stuff in that happened when you were a high school transformative kid. Transformative was also losing my balls. Or almost losing my balls. You can't. Okay, you guys are thinking backwards. Let me help you out here. Okay. Look at yourself as men today. The habits that you have, your your fears, your insecurities, the things you love, you're passionate about, and ask yourself, what are some of the things when I was in high school that helped form that trait inside of me? Is that I, better? Is that better? I for got you some. I got some. Mm. Okay. Thank so you. when I was, uh, I must have been maybe 13 years old. And my grandfather from Sicily came to visit. Um, and I think it was either the first or second time he'd been here. It was pretty cool to see him see like big overpasses on freeways and stuff. And it's not that, it, you know, Sicily's backwards or anything like that. He just never went anywhere. He stayed in a small town. He was very poor. Did he talk so when he like came, Geppetto? He didn't speak English at all, oh. actually. I appreciate that. Um, but anyway, so we took my dad worked, uh, you know, kind of construction work. Right. And so my grandfather in the summer when he came to visit, my dad had to go to work still. So my grandfather came along and my dad would take me as well, uh, to work with him. And my job was to do all the hard grunt labor. So like mix the cement, carry the buckets in, you know, wash everything or whatever. So my grandfather, who at this point is in his, I don't know, maybe late sixties is mixing cement with me and I'm watching Mm. this guy. Like, I mean, he's killing me. And I'm 14 years old. I work out. I'm fit. I'm healthy. And we're mixing cement back and forth. And there's a water bottle, uh, you know, next to us. But I won't stop to get the water because this old man isn't getting any water. And the whole time we're doing this, this guy is whistling the entire time. Like, whistling happy songs and having a great time. And I am absolutely dying. And when we went home that night, I just realized that, you know, it's just... they. People can work really hard, um, and we have a tremendous capacity for work, and it kind of changed my perspective of things. I had so much respect for him, but they also had a lot of respect for just the fact that you can do uh, quite a bit more than you think because, again, here's this old man that's just killing me 
in this hard labor. So yeah, that definitely show you molded how me. How weak you are! Yep. I have mixed the cement like this <laughs> all day long. See, I'm not even tired. Exactly. Do you remember how old you were? I was probably like 14. Oh, 14. So early mm. freshman year. Of high yeah, school I was there. young. Yeah. So I was laying in a field with, with my, your balls with swollen. my balls. Me and my swollen, grandfather were bonding over in cement. Pain. You and your grandfather were building an amazing thing out of cement. Exactly. Ben, what was your first exactly. job? Made me feel like shit, dude. <laughs> um, my first job would have been working in my dad's coffee shops because my dad decided he was he was like a serial entrepreneur. So when I was a kid, he started off as a firefighter. You know, everything makes paramedic. sense when you hear his stories. Everything makes and sense. And then he started off his own ambulance transport service until the local government put him out of business because like they don't want like a competing ambulance business competing with the city's ambulance service. So then That's he started weird. like a pager and communication service because he had all this communication, like all these pagers and stuff left over from the ambulance business. And so all of us kids, when I, we, we all look like drug dealers. We go over with pagers. <laughs> but it was always just our mom, like pick up eggs on the way home from tennis practice. Or, or whatever, but we all had pagers. And then after the pager business, he started a bagel franchise. And then after the bagel franchise, he started ordering, he built like an enormous like coffee roastery at our house, which I don't know was legal or not, like in terms of like zoning, because <laughs> the whole neighborhood would be full of illegal of coffee. coffee. But we lived a little bit outside of the city, so it was it was probably okay. But, but we would get these big like burlap bags from Guatemala and Costa Rica and Tanzania delivered to the house like every week. And he would just go out there and, and roast coffee. And then he started opening coffee shops and I got a job as a barista. So when I was 13, 14 years old, I was doing like 10 shots of espresso a day. No, you weren't. Yeah, totally. Really? Totally. Everything makes sense. Like I've, I've drank coffee forever. Everything makes sense. Yeah. Did, were his businesses successful or was he uh, like like uh, successful enough to take care of the family? But was he ever, did anything ever really take off? No, nothing really ever mm. took off. Eventually he, uh, he moved to Vashon Island and became a monk. And then he quit doing that. Now he he sells uh, structured water filters mm. to like farm and agriculture facilities. Do those work? He says the cows get bigger. Really? When they drink the structured water. Interesting. So, that, that's super interesting. Yeah. It, it's, he, it's, he also puts Snickers and Skittles in the structured water. So. <laughs> <laughs> amazing those cows just just flourish she's all like magic yeah they drink the chocolate water crazy. Wait, when you're okay I want, when you're in uh uh homeschool what is it like for you like as far as like hanging out with other kids now we grew up in i know an era where going outside and playing with the neighbor's kid was probably more normal than it is today i feel like kids don't do that very often but mm -hmm. did you go was there other events that you like met up with other homeschoolers and like did your family take you to certain things or did you go to camps every summer to engage like there's a whole community there's a whole oh, no, a whole community of yeah. van driving homeschoolers mm -hmm. in calico dresses barefoot <laughs> having lots of children in the kitchen <laughs> um no i we actually like we had pretty good socialization cuz i i was in idaho where you can play sports for the local schools that's allowed at least it was when I was homeschooled. So you could be homeschooled, but so still like, play sports. So I could like for the play school. tennis for the high school oh, and play basketball. Okay. Oh for the wow, high that's cool. So I had like some some sporting outlets there, and then uh, we had like really good like homeschooling group where we would go out and do field trips. You know, like rock climbing and gymnastics and like theater and art competitions and you know like all sorts of stuff. So I mean, I was still a, a geeky little homeschooler who played violin and chess and. You know, made gingerbread houses and did watercolor paintings. But. <laughs> did you did you guys take a lot of uh, like courses, or was it all done by mom? So it was uh, mostly curriculum because you like when when you when you're homeschooled, you can buy any any type of curriculum. Right. Like I homeschooled my kids for a few years before I I decided I was traveling so much, and my wife isn't really a teacher that it wasn't fair to them mm. to to use that model. But what my parents did was they had all these curriculums that they'd buy, and then they'd basically just give them to us. And for me, that worked really well because I've always just loved to read and be an independent learner. You're like you're probably the for, perfect kid to homeschool. Uh, well, you're just like, I was. You're just like here. My and siblings kind of got screwed because they like a lot of them like they didn't they didn't really want to read the books or, or do the work. They needed like more hands on mm -hmm. like tutoring and teaching. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a lot of it was really hands off. It was just like yeah, read this, learn it, and take the test, and and I wound up getting you know fantastic you know SAT scores and and I was just gonna say fine, in order but, to get into college, then you yeah. have to take certain yeah, you gotta, tests. Yeah, right? take the test. I, I forget what they are. So yeah. obviously, if you did yeah. your kids some years and probably would have if you weren't traveling so much, you're a huge fan of it for sure. You can tell the way you talk about it. Anything uh, you kind of, I mean, yeah, like, tell like me what, what you what, what I'm a fan of is outsourcing the things that are best left to the experts to the experts 
and then doing a little bit of unschooling and homeschooling yourself. Meaning that like my kids go to a cool school now where they can learn like how to program Lego robots and they're learning Spanish and Chinese and learning how to play all these different African instruments, all, all these things that I never probably would go out of my way to teach them. Plus, they're learning how to play well with others, how to be a good team player, mm-hmm. how to cooperate with others. Things I I actually was really pretty shitty at when I when I got out of homeschooling. Like I had to learn all that stuff late in life. When did you recognize I was that? like an independent? You know, all I wanted to do was lead. As soon as I got to college, you did. And, I re- and when you get stuck, like you're you're in a team of five people to complete some task, right? And you realize like unless you're leading every single part of it, you're unhappy and you don't trust anybody to do any of the work except yourself and you want to micromanage everything. And I, and I still have to deal with that. And, and, you know, part of it might be personality, but then I think part of it is I just didn't really grow up cooperating with, with a team of peers around me. So I think it's, it's good for a child to be put in that situation. I think it's good to have tutors or have a private school or have some type of a some type of a school setting, right? And and there's some people that are even doing like freaking like forest school. Uh, the few- but then you have those those things that you want to teach your kids mm-hmm. when they get home from school. Like your job is to homeschool them, unschool them. You know, I work with my kids on wilderness survival mm-hmm. and foraging and shooting the bow and entrepreneurship and cooking and all the things that they're not learning at school. And all you know, they they always have the option on whether or not they actually want to be homeschooled or go to school. And I would love like once they get you know, up to fifth or sixth grade for them to just branch off and, you know, start doing their own thing. Oh, dude. But, I, but look, that's up to them. Right. I mean, tell you right now, when we came to your house and we had the first time we met, one of the things that everybody, as soon as we all walked out, like everybody was like, oh my God, he's like super dad, like his kids. And you could, you could tell by your kids' mannerisms, the way they look at you, the way they respond to you, the relationship that you've built with them. And then you can just see how intelligent they are too. I mean, it's, it was pretty cool. Well, I put to, the fear of God in them and hang them in the cages for a little <laughs> while before company comes over. It's not like, sure it's that. not like that whatsoever. Yeah. It's in fact, you, it's, it's Boy. exactly what you're saying is all that, that, that time. <laughs> it's crazy to think beating. somebody like you is as much as you're flying and doing things and you've got, and I know you handle a lot of your business all by yourself. So I feel like to still make time as a father to do those things that's a that's a big fucking deal there's not a lot of there's not a lot of men that are as success as successful as you are that still are are managing their their home life that well also it was pretty and it was something that we all noticed right away yeah i think if you enjoy it you know you enjoy doing those things with your kids then they just they just happen but you know all i remember is you said i had ugly hands yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> big they're big hands big. Uh, I think um, the, that's the future of education I really I think that's the future anyway is where you're going to just have facilitators uh, people who are going to facilitate the learning through different you know means uh, you know kind of like what he was talking about like people I think they get the and I don't oh, maybe dude but maybe the future of education is VR and AI right like there's there's that possibility too, which I actually don't really like the idea of. But you learn just about everything through a virtual headset and through artificial intelligence that gave God, you imagine. progress along it's, the way. And I like uh, have I, mean, I well, know I know this sounds alarmist, but just like having uh, uh, electrical pollution and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi next to your head all day long as you learn and interacting with a computer like mm-hmm. like for your entire education I, like i would i would rather my kids be in like well as as, as far as the dangers of the devices themselves um are concerned i think we'll figure that out i think we'll definitely figure that part out now the real question is uh is the destination the goal or is the journey uh a big part of it and what i mean by that is you know you you someone can just give you answers to things Uh, And you'll learn something from that because you'll learn the answer. But then you learn a lot also from finding the answers, the the journey that goes along. It's it's almost like when people talk about like, um, you know, reaching enlightenment and you've got, you know, monks talking about meditating for decades. And then you've got other people saying, well, I just take psychedelics and I can see the same thing. And then they do brain imaging. They're like, oh, it is the same thing. Neurofeedback. Right. And I I think that some parts of it are, and I think a lot of parts of them aren't. I mean, there's a lot that comes from the the process of learning, the trials and tribulations, the dedication, the, you know, learning how to, you know, uh, mold your life because you have this particular goal or whatever. So as far as learning is concerned, um, you know, we can create shortcuts and we'll, we'll know things, but I don't know if that's necessarily the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Cause there's a lot that I've learned in the pursuit of trying to learn or figure out the answer to something. 
um, you know, going to a library. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've researched a, a subject, but I've re- read so many other things because of the kind of the web of knowledge that it leads you yeah. down. Yeah. And uh, I, I just, I, I think that um, we'll see what happens. I think really the, I mean, if you're going to go that. Experiential learning. I mean, and, and even the idea that back when I wanted to learn something, I'd go to the library and go to that section of the library where all the books about that particular topic were, and I'd have to leaf through the books and look through books that happened to be beside that book and, and just delve very deeply into the topic mm-hmm. versus being able to just like laser target something on Google. Well, yeah, Google, well, I mean, Google or TED Talks or Wikipedia experience. now is so well, Now, granted, you can go down a rabbit hole on the internet just like you can go down a rabbit sure. hole in a library. But it, yeah, j- just that process of having to hunt down the answer Look, in a library. Was, here's the here's the deal. Like education. if I'm if I'm reading on the internet, like I'm in my room and I can boom click and I, I've got all this information and that's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with that. But the process of going to the library, the pre- the preparation that goes into this, is a mental one. Like I'm driving there, I'm going to this place with all this knowledge. I'm here to learn. I'm in this space. It's the reason why uh, churches exist. Uh, it's the, you know. Uh, it's the reason why people go to places of worship and meditation. It's not you can do that anywhere, but when you have that dedicated space, there's something that comes with that the journey to get there. And I think that you have to value both. Uh, like I said, I'm not I don't want to demonize um, technology because I think it's fantastic, but I also think the journey is extremely important. You mean sitting in a dark basement watching porn is different than going to a coffee shop to talk to a pretty girl? Definitely, very, very different. but they're both valuable. It's messed they up. both got value. They've got, both got value to them. So, but yeah, uh, you know, I think is uh, it's like it's like this. Like they look at statistics with people who go to college versus people who don't, and they say if you go to college, you earn this much more money. Mm-hmm. Um, and they say it's because oh, it's because they went to college, but they don't factor they don't factor out the part that people who tend to go to college also tend to be a little more serious about what they're doing. So part of the reason why they may be more successful is they're willing to go through the journey, not necessarily the degree itself. Because I know lots of entrepreneurs who are very, very successful who didn't go to college but pursued that also on their own. They just didn't yeah. have that structured thing or whatever. Right. So it's, that's kind of you know a little bit of the comparison I'm trying to make. So, But I mean, moving ahead, I think uh, we're going to learn quite a bit from the homeschool. And that's a movement right now that's growing. Uh, very rapidly. It is it's homes- actually homeschooling. Unschooling is another one where it's a where huge like, movement. Like yeah, it used to be very fringe, but now it's very, very big. And there's certain things that come from it that we can learn from. Like one of the things that I learned, which didn't even dawn on me until I, I had some clients who homeschooled their uh, their kid, and uh, you know they kind of educated me, was how one of the things we do in schools is we put kids in the same classrooms that are all the same age. Mm-hmm. So like if you're six and you're in the same grade, if you're seven, you're in the same grade, and so on. And that's actually not optimal for learning. It actually encourages um, bullying. It doesn't chronological snobbery. Yeah, (laughs) like like really wanting to only interact with your peers, having difficulty. You know, for me, like I actually for a very long time got along quite quite well with adults. Yes, people who are a lot older, and I didn't actually do that well with with my peers as well as I did with with people who were a lot older because you were always around adults. Well, around adults a lot more than if I would have been in public school. That's yeah, right. Absolutely. So one thing we can learn from homeschooling there is to do put classrooms and have kids of different ages. And again, there's a facilitator that's facilitating the education so each child can learn at a different rate. But what they a one find- one-room schoolhouse. I'm sorry? With a blackboard. Yeah, exactly. And a teacher up front with the switch where yeah. she hits you on the hand. <laughs> Very motivating. The kid in the corner with the dunce cap. But they, fi- they find when they do this, this model, like older kids become like protective of the younger kids and they kind of police the well, classroom. It, make, it and, makes yeah. total- It it's makes really total- makes, it worked for Abraham Lincoln, so- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It, 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 it makes total sense. You know, Ben, you talked about uh, you know some of the drawbacks of being homeschooled and the working with others. When was the last time that you noticed that in your adult life that uh were a relationship where you're like fuck looking back i i probably didn't handle that the best because i have a hard time with that like do you still see that surface oh all the time i mean even even right now i I was telling sal in the car like i'm really working hard on on building a little bit bigger brand right now you know like like you know tomorrow we're we're launching an energy bar for my website and i wanted to write 
all the copy, all the emails, all the post. You know, and I did wind up doing a great deal of that because, and I paint myself into this corner where I'm just like having to work my ass off because I don't trust anybody else to do it, or, oh, or wow. I'll see what somebody else will write. I'm like, nah, sorry, that's that's not my baby. I, that's that's not how I would have written it. And so I I do really want to manage like everything myself, and it's hard for me being able to build a team and scale my business, still wanting to just do a lot of that myself. And even honestly, you know, something that I've had to work on a lot is just company culture, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm so happy just doing things by myself. Sometimes I forget that, you know, I need to actually talk and, and get to know (laughs) my employees, the social media (laughs) manager and the COO and the person who's doing tech and the IT person, like, I need to actually, you know, interact with these people, you know, on on a daily basis when I'm just so used to just being introverted. Well, I can imagine and, and that you own. you probably assume just instinctually that they'll just do that, like they're just going to do mm-hmm. work. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, you manage my social media, you sit right. over there and just do it because that's what I would do. That's right. probably what happens. And I'm extreme. To you. Like, if, if you, <laughs> have you guys ever done an enneagram personality type? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Great, great. I mean, anybody listening is it's like eleven, twelve bucks. You go take this personality typing test. It's called an enneagram. Enneagram. Super accurate. You you learn a ton about yourself and how you tick and mm-hmm. how you interact with others. What, you can send the results to other people. I can't to remember teach what them type I was. How to remember? interact with you? Well, I am like the most extreme end of self driven achiever that you can get to. Like mm-hmm. like the most extreme end. Like like I will just take something and, and want to do it all myself and need nobody to ever talk to me to follow up and, and see if I'm actually doing Super it. Super self motivated. And so I just you know I, I fall into that trap sometimes of assuming. That everybody everybody's is, like that. everybody's like it, like a, a self-driven you know person who just wakes up wanting to to conquer the world every morning, which is how I wake up. Yeah. I hate to I hate to break it to you, dude. Most people don't like that. It's weird. It's it's <laughs> it's also uh, it can be pretty limiting though, right? Because like you're saying, it's tough to. Yeah. You're limited no, but, by but your I, own but I physical see that. ability. Like, like my wife and I, we were talking about this at, at, at dinner too. Like we're like yin and yang, right? Like she doesn't take supplements and she doesn't have like a workout regimen and, and she doesn't care about, you know, any of the, the biohacks or, you know, she's never even listened to one of my podcasts. That's but, so great. but I see her, you know, she'll like at five o'clock, she'll be out on the porch for two hours, sipping a glass of wine, sitting on the hammock, watching the trees. And I'm like, that is a foreign concept to me just to be, <laughs> like i would be out there for five minutes and i'd be like well what you want to do i gotta do i'm gonna go i go check this i gotta go okay i got a project downstairs i'll see you i finish my wine bye and i'm like that's that's just so when, I, when I you wh- how do you meditate then very carefully <laughs> um no it's, no even even meditation is difficult like, I, like it has the to be kind, for a purpose. Like the kind of meditation that draws me, you know, kundalini or moving meditation or even like candle meditation where I'm just watching something flicker and glow, just closing my – like I did TM. TM was really hard for me where you're just there with you and your mantra and your eyes closed and you're not focusing on your breath. For and hours. Like, you've got the mantra, but that's about <laughs> it. And that kind of sort of distracts you. But, yeah, it's tough. Gosh, man. That's like, we're all very similar when yeah. it comes to that, though. Yeah. I mean, every. Well, it's different. It's. Uh, I, do you think is this what drives you to do all the biohacking? Because you're limited by. Because I mean, you do do a lot. I've actually nah, the, only one other person I've met who I would kind of Craig is like that. Craig does a lot of shit on his own too, right? He's yeah. Super super hardworking. Yeah. Uh, but you're limited. You're limited by your physical ability. Um, you can't possibly do everything do you, you want to do. Do you so, turn over a lot of employees? Have you do you go through no. a lot? No, I, I don't go through a lot of employees at, at all, actually, and it's it's because I'm a people pleaser. Like, I, like I, I just I I like <laughs> you don't fire up. No, I, I don't. I don't. I, I figure out a way. I've, I've probably ever fired. I think one person. Oh wow! Ever. Yeah, in oh, ten wow. years. So what if they suck really? They had to. They had to suck really bad for you right. to fire them. Right. No, I, I have this process where I just gradually make them realize over the course of time that they suck so bad that they should probably quit. <laughs> God, that's you that's so inefficient. Again. You messed up. Just again. fire them. You messed up again. <laughs> Please. Um, yeah. Is it, what, what was your question? Uh, question? You, you're, is the, that what drives you? Oh, the, bio, the biohacking. biohacking. No, here's here's what drives the biohacking. And you guys are going to realize this as fitness podcasters. You talk about this. Oh, I already, we already that. know what you're going to say. Justin and I just talked about this because yeah. eventually you're like, you Even- run out of shit. So eventually you're, gonna- you're like, I talked about barbells three years ago and I talked about how to do a kettlebell swing. And I talked about, uh, you know, the values of a complete amino acid profile 
And then you get to the point where, well, gosh, what else is there to cover in fitness? And then you're like, <laughs> maybe I'll talk about your circadian rhythm. Yeah. I'll just, I, and then and they're like, oh, I talked about the circadian rhythm. And, and by the way, there are special glasses that you can wear <laughs> and they're called blue light blocking glasses. And then you're like, oh, I just went down that rabbit hole. And, and you've got that biohack. And then somebody's like, oh, I heard your podcast on blue light blocking glasses. And I have this brand new 10,000 Lux special light producing ear bud I want to send you to check out. And they send that to you and you're like, wow, this, this is cool. This worked. Maybe I'll mention this on my podcast. So you do that. And then there's some other person's like, oh, hey, I have some new form of coffee that I've infused with, with whatever. I want to send this to you to try because I see now that you talk about some interesting things and, you're, and then you get that and you're talking all of a sudden about like smart drugs and neutral. Next and thing you know, like, you got lights in your ears. You got this is exactly the next thing you know, you're doing coffee enemas in Thailand. So, <laughs> yeah. This is exactly what Justin and I talked about the other day. We're like, you Slippery know what? I bet slope. you, I bet you Ben was not like that when he first started. I bet he was talked about a lot of the same things we do. But at one point, you just you keep reaching. If you watch the evolution of the the stuff that we were talking about just two years ago, sure. and now it's oh yeah, you see. I mean, but like, you also like evolved a, as a host. You know that's and part I did of it a Q and A. Like I've done, I've done Q and A for ten years. You structure your podcast based on the questions that people are asking, and the way that we always do it is I will tell the person who now goes in and picks the like questions that will answer on the show and stuff like that. I tell them, try not to choose questions that cover things that we've already talked about on previous shows. Instead, just tell that person, hey, go listen to podcasts so X, like, Y, or yeah. Z. Tell us about the best so telomere now, workout. Yeah, now, and the program. questions just get more and more fringe yeah. every year. But it's kind of cool because it keeps me educating myself too. When I get a question I don't know the, the answer to and I have to figure out what the answer is, I mean, you, you actually you you get a very targeted education that's precise to what your audience wants to know. <laughs> have you about. have you ever shared this with your audience? What you're sharing right now? Because I oh, think yeah. Because okay, yeah. because I think that's really cool. Yeah. Because I think probably somebody, not enough. Because you get called up, people are like, oh, I listened to your podcast eight years ago, and you were talking about muscle fiber types. But I tuned in today, and you were discussing dick shocking. <laughs> I'm no longer going to listen to your show. It's gotten really weird, and <laughs> and you know, so so yeah. I mean, it's, it's something that that I think more people should realize is like. You know, with podcasting, every time you record one, it's out there forever. And there's this thing called Google. And you could Google, like, you know, my name or your guys' name and whatever topic that you want to know about and see if someone's actually covered it. How before. many total episodes have you recorded? Because you've been on air for like what, nine years? Oh, over a thousand easily. You've been on for nine years, easily. right? Have you been podcasting? 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. Which is a, that's like ancient in podcast world. You're probably one of the first ones. Mm -hmm. How did people access it back then? Just website? No, the covered wagon. Okay. And one of those little styrofoam cups with the wire coming out the side of it. <laughs> uh, no, signals. it was, it was uh, like I had to like like write the RSS feed and submit that to iTunes, and it, it was it was a pain. It break all the time, and it, it was it was like it was not a smooth process. What were you, what were you doing for work at that time? I was a personal trainer. Okay, so you're a personal yeah. in a gym yeah. privately. What were you doing? Oh, well, I owned all my own gyms for seven years. That, that's all I did out of college was I ran gyms and personal training studios. And the way that I ran them was I bought the nicest equipment. So I had indirect calorimetry equipment, high-speed video cameras, platelet-rich plasma machines. Like I was the complete geek of fitness. And I partnered up with local physicians. They would send me their patients because they knew that I was the guy to send people to when they wanted good treatment that nobody else was able to get. And they wanted results that these people weren't getting from other personal trainers. And I did that. Like, like that was that was my shtick, how, right? How the like, hell did you afford that out of college? I bought it. Well, I under I under I understood the value of investing. And when I came out of college, I didn't have a lot of debt because I worked five jobs in college. So I had a lot of money <laughs> saved up. And you know, I, I remember I, I would I paid I paid med graphics fourteen thousand dollars when I first started a gym just to buy the indirect calorimetry equipment. What? And then I set up all the high speed video cameras. So I had all this stuff. But what I did was I partnered with Docs. Dude, you wait. So you got to stop right they, there. You got to tell me what's going through your head at that age to have the foresight to see, to even invest in something like that. Were you 18, 19 years old, be, 20 I wanted years to be old? The, I wanted to be the best of the best. At that so, moment. So, so, so you all, never all went out. You never went college. out. You never went out and partied or any of that stuff in college. You just. Oh, yeah. I totally did. But all through college, uh, I was okay. a personal trainer. Hmm. I had a lot of jobs. I, I was very, very driven, you know, because because I, I was also homeschooled. So I didn't know it was normal, right? So I. Yeah, you know, I, I I did party, but I also studied my ass off, took a ton of credits, um, worked a lot, and held down a job as a personal trainer all through college as well. 
So when I graduated college and started working at a gym and then eventually branched off after about a year and started all my own gyms and studios, I had a different mindset. I had, I had money. I wanted to invest it in what I was doing. And I, I really had this, you know, I, I did a podcast with uh, Neil Strauss on my show about how the way I grew up was like the Greenfields had to, had to be like the best of the best. Mm. Like that was like the way that I was raised was we had to get like the best test scores and we had to, you know, like, like, um, it, everything like spelling had to be perfect and reading had to be perfect. It just, just everything was. Now, how are you very, measuring very, that as a homeschooler? Is it, do you. When you're biting, well, some some of it's standardized. You're, national, you're just kicking your little sister's ass. I mean, who are you really beating up and, on? Them? And part part of it is is literally just like mom with a red pen. Okay. I mean, like like that's that's part of it as well. Mm. Like like my parents expected a lot out of us, and okay. so now it worked I, on you. Did it work on your siblings too? Did they also? Not so much. Mm. No, it. I think part of it for me was just my personality type. Yeah, because I could see that method being very effective for some people, right? And but also be very ineffective for a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, it, it didn't work that well. On my sister, like my sister, worked pretty well on. But then you know, I've I've got another sister and two brothers that I don't think that approach. Wow. So well you so you 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 leave college. You've got money saved up because you mm-hmm. worked five jobs. You buy all this equipment and you start these gyms where doctors refer you right. patients. That, so you're doing yeah, a lot of I was rehab. Primarily working with with patients. And I was working with athletes, right? Because I, I was racing as an Ironman triathlete at the time. So everyone in the triathlon community knew me. And triathletes, frankly, have a high disposable income. I mean, mm. like the average income of a triathlete is like $171,000 or mm-hmm. something like that. Like it's an expensive it's, sport. It's crazy. Yeah, spandex is expensive. I did, not know, I did not know that. Well, oh, yeah, bikes. Their, yeah, their bikes are super expensive. Well, I, the I training knew, I, No, I knew it was expensive, but I didn't know that was it was that much of a... It's high. Yeah, yeah wow. The that's... divorce rate's really high, too. Um <laughs> True. Anyways, though, so it was primarily triathletes and other like professional endurance athletes for the most part, like, you know, 40 to 60 year old demographic, disposable income, loves to exercise, wants the best of the best. And then also all the patients that physicians are referring to me. And a couple of physicians in the community nominated me at to for the NSCA as America's top personal trainer, like their, their national personal trainer of the year award. When I won that, that's when I started doing more speaking, more traveling, more writing, more freelancing, and I gradually got out of the gym scene and started doing more what I do now, which is you know, basically. Were you were you new nervous media. on your first like public big speech? There, are- no, like I I, I was in in theater all through homeschooling, oh, all through high school. I competed on the on the college speech and debate team. So I was on stage all the time for that. So no, so it wasn't it was, a big deal at all. No, it was it was pretty. And you guys know personal training. I mean, you're you're hanging out with people, right. and talking all the time. Anyway, right. So yeah. Any well, so then anything that you see from the homeschool that uh, you already said, like working with others. Anything else that like, you have a fear of that you, that's a challenge that you are always having to work. Yeah, on? Yeah. What do you suck at? Mm. I know. We just talk about everything what, you fucking what, are good what, at. What, what does homeschooling make you suck gonna, at? No, no, no. What do you uh, suck at? Well, yeah, you. Personally. He's all nothing. He's I suck at sucking. honest honestly a a big part of it still is that like like doing a really good job um making friends right not being do you have a complete lone do you have a do you have a best friend not really no well no like besides me so so we became best friends i'm very introverted i I have a i have a ton of acquaintances i don't have like a like a best friend that i just you know call up on the phone bro and and chat with like did, probably, did you, probably my, I, I know this sounds lame but like my best friend right now is my wife oh like, that's, that's not that's not yeah, lame that's cool that's, that's, yeah. should be that yeah way. but well yeah. but you should have a second best yeah, friend yeah exactly yeah. so the, like things like that you know um and part of that too is is i just spend so much time traveling and speaking and you know being with a whole bunch of acquaintances but never being like settled down enough at home to have like that best friend on the home front who I hang out with. Yeah. So, so because yeah. of that, do you catch yourself like in, in uh, like conversations or, or potential relationship moments like that you get nervous or feel different or you don't act completely yourself? Do you feel that ever? Oh yeah. Yeah. And usually it's one-on-one situations with, with other, usually like other guys, peers, like people, like just because growing up, that was one of the situations I wasn't in a lot. Give me a stupid thing you've like, done. Then I know you've done something. You've embarrassed yourself, and you were like, "Fuck, Ben, why would I say something stupid <laughs> like that?" No, not no. Don't not, bullshit me. No, no, really. I mean, we, already, not, we not stroked you off for a not, half hour. Not I want to hear that some. so much as just like just just awkwardness, like like really having a hard time having like 
one-on-one heart-to-heart conversations you mm-hmm. know like i don't do well like you know even when i'm like at masterminds and stuff like that where they there they send you off one-on-one to you know pour out your heart and your feelings with other guys that kind of like i just yeah that's something i've, I've never really been that great at so that's i think and i think part of that is is homeschooling part of it is i'm ex- i'm an extreme introvert as well right. so I, I recharge by being by myself i'm very good at like you know, there's a book called Power of Introverts by Susan Cain, and it's a really good book, but it goes into how introverts are really good at uh, like one to many, like like being on stage, speaking, doing things like that. But like one on one or in very small groups at like cocktail parties, stuff like that, they're not so great at. Mm. And I think that come it's out that of being, engagement that, that come out of being homeschooled, come out of being like a like a self driven, like high achiever type, I think kind of makes me. Uh, suck at making friends like like close friends one on one. Did that make uh, interviewing at all challenging? Then because that's kind of like that, right? Like when you first started, was that? Did you notice that was a major hurdle where you would have to have this dialogue back and forth, or were you very formulaic when you first started? Like you had these questions you were going to ask, like. What was that? Do you mean me interviewing people, or yeah, you interviewing people? Oh, you, mean, that- you mean for podcast? <laughs> yeah. No, that that was never that hard for me to just sit back and ask questions because a lot of my podcasts are based on books, right? I read voraciously. I I read you know three to five books a week, and I'm constantly underlining and highlighting and then contacting those people and getting them on the show. So for me, it's super easy. I'm I'm literally just like talking to that yes. author. I, I might not even know what they look like, right? Sometimes it's a Skype conversation. It's just like this imaginary conversation almost with the person who I have a bunch of underlines and highlights in front of me for. Um, you know, at the same time, though, like like one on one face to face interviews, those can sometimes be a little awkward for me. I mean, oh, yeah. it's still still something I'm working on. That's what I'm. That's what I was wondering. I actually well, peed my pants twice so far just sitting here stupid. talking with you guys. You're, I, yeah, I think you're, Justin's just, chair though. Just so, so, chair, so. You know, <laughs> yeah, I heard it was the totally funny chair. Totally normal. Yeah. So do you uh, do you notice? Because I know the uh, you have uh, the was it the the Brotherhood, which is a bunch of entrepreneurs, businessmen that you know. Shh, uh, I'm not supposed to talk about that. Oh, is it? Oh, it's the a group that we're not supposed that's to. A secret. The secret. Well, the, we'll call it the secret group. Ah, uh, yes, thanks. Is it the <laughs> secret. <laughs> the mark, secret. Mark that down for edit. Doug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Secret group, uh, is there? Um, do you feel like that's helped, or do you feel like those guys you've yeah. gotten closer and tied to? I mean, because yeah. you've been doing that for a while now, right? Totally. How long? Yeah, can you, can uh, like say? five years. Okay, so yeah. five years. Yeah, and that's true. Like, like being part of like a mastermind, a group of of like minded guys, right? That helps a lot. But I guess like like for me, when you say friend, like sometimes I think of like being at home in Spokane, Washington. Who's that guy I'm going to call up to like play frisbee? Or go paddleboarding with, or yeah. just like come hang out, and and that's that's like the the thing that I haven't really built still. Yeah, you know. it's you know it's hard to when we're all grown ass men and we're yes. in our lives now. So I'll, mm-hmm. I have I have two childhood best friends, Justin and Jared, that we go all the way back to elementary school, and to you me, mean Justin from Mind Pub. No, different no, Justin? different Justin, and then I have just a ton of like acquaintances, and then some good friends. And there's definitely a difference between all three of them. There's a difference between my acquaintances. There's a difference between my good friends like that I've made as an adult. And then there's a difference between like my childhood friends. And my childhood friends, the, the neatest thing about those friends or making those types of relationships is literally uh, we can sit in a room and actually not speak to each other. And it'd be comfortable and normal. Where then if I'm with like good friends... We kind of need to be doing something, but we, we're easygoing and whatever you want to do, I'm down to do. And we have good conversation. We laugh, we joke. And then you have your acquaintances, which I know all of us have quite a few that, you know, when we're in the business that we are, we meet people all the time and lots of times are like minded people that we like hanging out with. So there's definitely different levels to. The- there are. And, but I'll tell you what, yeah. I mean, those childhood friends that you develop, they, they get very close. They known you for a very long time. They know things you've done and ways you've thought. Um, which is great, uh, but there's also a downside to that. Of because course, as you grow as a as an individual, um, sometimes it's very difficult to be who you are now with someone who's known you when you were something else or when you were a certain way. Because you know everybody, like I said, everybody grows and changes, and so it can also make it very difficult. Which is why I think you'll find yourself having, you know, different friends along the way. Like there's definitely people I've grown up with that. I mean, if I'm going to cry, those are the people that are going to see me, you know, cry. But if, but at the same time, I'm a growth minded individual and I change all the time. And I'm always talking about something different. I'm always obsessed or passionate about a new subject. 
And sometimes it's very difficult to do that with some of those old friends because they're like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you know, there you go again or well, whatever. That, that's like those are so and you do you can as an adult. And it took me a long time to figure this out. And I felt like that kind of slowed me up a bit because at one point, you know, I I kind of went a different direction. But so we're all still very close and like mm-hmm. family and see each other when we, we you know, have a great time when we when we do. But there are different, you know, types of friends and levels, and they're all important, I think, healthy. But it is tough as a as a grown man at our age to, you know, meet another man and get like become best friends. Mm-hmm. It's like you're, most of them have married kids, wife. They're they're not even making enough time for their wives and kids, and they got work, you know, 60, 70 mm-hmm. hours a week. And it's like, yeah, I when, mean, I, I I don't know what the statistic was that I read, but it was something along the lines of even in an era of Facebook and social media and extreme connectiveness, loneliness is one of the major leading causes of depression even in our hyper connected era. And it's possibly, you know, because of that, like we all live very fast moving lives. We're all extremely connected virtually, but how often are we just like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder well, if it's because sitting I'll t- on a fishing boat, you know, mm-hmm. next to some guy and, and I don't, I don't know. Is that, is that how, is that how friends work? Well, <laughs> so we sit on fishing boats. <laughs> I don't know. He's new at this. He's, yeah. he's, yeah. he's new at Can this. Go, you want to go fishing? fish on my fishing boat yeah let's go throw a frisbee yeah so uh, my theory on my theory on that is we're hyper connected we can share ideas and information better than ever but the way you really form bonds has to do with sharing emotion and experience um and you'll find this with like men who go to war with other men for example the bond that they create with each other is um i mean uh, it's like nothing else um or if you've been on a sports team and you guys, you know, played very hard and you've won hard battles together and you lost together, that'll form incredible, you know, uh, incredible bonds or just traumatic experiences or amazing experiences. Those are the things that create those bonds. And because we're so fast paced and, you know, we don't necessarily sit there and experience things as much. Um, that could be probably what I would say with the, you know that's causing yeah. it. But I think yeah. we should probably all go to prison or join sports teams more. <laughs> let's, all, let's all kill someone together. But I think um, you know I think in ter- and it's it's harder for men right because society makes it easier for women to show and connect through emotion and it makes it very difficult for men. Like it's hard to sit here and talk to another guy you just met and you, even though you guys are cool and you're kind of like oh we're, we can be great fans, you're not going to share like super emotional deep things with them because we're we're brought up to believe that that's just not you know you just don't do that as a guy I don't know. I so it becomes more difficult balls <laughs> exactly it'd be interesting i mean we we do have a, we do have a studio audience of females we listening do. right now yeah yeah <clears throat> i think they're all not listening they're, anymore they're all on their phones <laughs> yeah, they don't playing care candy crush <laughs> <laughs> exactly what about your wife then is she does she have a lot of friends she actually does yeah yeah yeah, she does, but she's you know again we're like we're yin and yang like she's extremely extroverted, and you know like when I go home I'm content to sit at home in my underwear and do absolutely nothing but hang out with my kids and like you know work a little bit and chill you know do do some workouts play the guitar mm-hmm. and you know she but she wants to go out does that right? and, does that make you a shitty uh, double dater a little bit yeah. <laughs> a little bit yeah um yeah but but yeah she's got a lot of friends. Yeah. Yeah. When was the last time you were on a double date? Uh, I don't know. I I honestly don't even know. Oh, dude, you are we'll shitty. Go, yeah. yeah, bring her yeah, out next time, shitty. man. We'll all go out yeah. together. Yeah, I'll have to bring her down. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Do you find, because um, I think you're a phenomenal father. I've seen you Actually, we were, we were on a triple date the other night. Did we, you? We were at a, we were at a, uh, uh, like a like a health event in Carmel. Like Sometimes I'll fly her into different events. Oh, that. there you so go. So it was a triple date. It was me. Uh, other podcasters, uh, Chris Kelly and his wife, they were in the Nourish Balance Thrive podcast, and then Dave Asprey and his wife. So it was a triple date. Mm. Oh, no shit. Very, I didn't, very, very geeky table. I didn't know you hung out with Dave before. I knew you knew yeah. him. I didn't know you guys actually hung out like yeah. that. Is yeah. that the first time, or you hung out with him before? No, we, we get around at a lot of the same events, so... I don't know shit. Yeah, yeah. He had like yeah. the biggest booth. I have, uh, at I, the have blue light, I have blue light blocking glass jealousy, though. Why? They're always cooler than mine. Is he wearing them all the time? No, they're just cooler. They're okay. always more more cut. You're not edge. supposed to wear them during yeah. the day, by the way. Ben taught me that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember when we brought it up at Paleo FX. That was mm-hmm. pretty funny. <laughs> People walking around like ski goggle sized blue light blocking glasses. <laughs> yeah. At the middle new, of the day. New. Yeah. Granted, the lights were bright. 
So yeah. they right. well, and those yeah. those those type of lights are uh, are not good for you, right? I mean, those floor those old fluorescent fluorescent lights, right? That's Easy for you the, to say. that's the word on. Actually, they do they do cause a lot of glare. They flicker. And our eyes, you know, it's it's you know, like I, like I mentioned at dinner, like mm-hmm. the human body has not evolved to a certain extent to deal with a lot of of modern assailants, you know, such as like you know modern lighting, for example. So, yeah, uh, Ben, what is, what are you finding like super cool right now? Like, what are you learning uh, about at this moment? Hmm, what am I learning about? Uh, that's a that's an interesting question. Uh, probably one thing I've been uh, uh, when, when you ask that question, the first thing that comes to mind is what books have I been reading, mm-hmm. and the the two that I've just finished, uh, the the two that I read flying over from Bulgaria because I didn't realize they confiscate your laptop when you fly to Turkey. There's like 12 countries you can't fly into the U.S. and have your laptop on the plane because apparently you can hide a bomb inside a laptop. Mm-hmm. So oh, they shit. take the laptop. So usually I'll write on a plane. But what I did on this on this last plane ride a couple of days ago is I just read instead. The two books were uh, one on the Russian practice of uh, sistema, which is a uh, form of martial breath art. work. Yeah, and martial arts. It's really fascinating. Very simple, uh, but you know, just just a, a series of like sit ups, levers, push ups, and squats while doing certain breathing patterns, such as in through the nose. Like like for for two push ups, for the first push up, you just go in through your nose hold for a count out through the mouth. And then the next push up, you, you do that again, like on one breath. And then you proceed up to being able to do seven on one breath and then back down the ladder from seven down to one. Then you repeat with like a specific version of a squat, like a wall facing squat and then a, a lever. And then there's a bunch of like tumbling movements. It's really interesting. I want to actually find a, a gym up in Spokane hmm. that does this. Now, what do you find interesting about it? Just because is it different or is it because it's uh, combining I like, breath I, with activity? I, I like breath work and body weight training. I, you know, I, I love, I love the idea. So of, talk, know, like, the, talk, like the Wim Hof fire breathing where you, where you'll breathe up, you'll retain a bunch of CO2 or you'll blow off a bunch of CO2. And then you'll do like a set of 30 push ups with your breath held. Like I, 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 and honestly, my infatuation with it is I just love the way that the body feels I like some of the evidence that you get in terms of of you know blood flow. But and, how does it you know, feel? In that case, Explain like how it feels. Inside. You get a rush. You get you get like this nitric oxide rush. It's like a it's like a like a head rush. So walk me rush. through that real quick. Yeah. I want to try that. So what do you do? You, you... It's like the Wim Hof style breathing okay. would be, for example, you would breathe really fast, sh- uh, sharp, deep inhales, and then short, shallow exhales through the nose for like sixty seconds. So it'd be like. <laughs> Okay. breathing from the belly in, in yoga would be called like fire breathing or yogi breathing then at the very end you exhale all your air and when you've done that you've blown off a lot of co2 and then you breathe everything in you hold for a deep breath and then you just crank out as many body weight exercises as you can or you get into a cold shower or, you know jump into cold water because you get this nitric oxide release as you blow off all that co2 so it's just hyper oxygenating you is yeah. that what it's doing yep exactly very interesting yeah it's and it's also dangerous i mean you know co2 for <laughs> it's example also dangerous. yeah co2 is like your body's uh signal to breathe right and some people will do this and then they'll go like do hypoxic underwater swimming and get shallow water blackout because they don't have carbon dioxide the body signal to breathe in high enough amounts to remind them to breathe when they're underwater and they die but, but you can hold your breath longer right like a lot of free divers will do this as a breath hold tactic but you also increase your chances of dying so it's it's you know it's, it's risky to do in certain so scenarios. You, don't like, do, you don't do the like push-ups underwater. underwater then i don't do my push-ups underwater mm. no so systema breathing was one or, or or systema and that book was called let every breath uh, and, and I've just been doing that, you know, in my hotel room and, you know, just, just a little bit of body weight training mm-hmm. past couple of days, experimenting with it, a little bit of the back of the airplane. Um, and then the other one was a book about basically how the body is a battery. There's a really good book called the body electric by Robert Becker about the electrochemical potential, you know, across the cell membranes and how, different things can affect that everything from you know exposure to negative ions from the water from forest or you know exposure to household appliances you know wi-fi bluetooth stuff like that but this book is called uh it it was something like healing is voltage i think is the name of it Mm. and all it's like 600 pages that goes into how different frequencies affect the human body it's really interesting wow so that's pretty fascinating you're probably you're gonna interview some of these authors Mm mm-hmm yeah, mm. I like that's that's my MO. Like like 
honestly, you guys know this. That's a cool part about being a podcaster. If, if that's the way that you want to go, like more of an educational podcast is you read just extremely fucking cool books yeah. and then you contact these folks and you interview them. Mm. I mean, do you, uh, do you turn your Wi-Fi off at home at night? I don't have Wi-Fi. You don't. Oh, that's right. It's all yeah. hardwired. Huh? Everything's hardwired. Yeah. yeah, see, we... It always be like, you can't access the internet without plugging your computer in with a metal-shielded, like, physical Ethernet cable. Yeah, see, when we interviewed Mercola, he, like, scared the shit out of us talking about all this. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that cat, yeah. yeah, like, when you call him on his phone, he answers with his selfie stick <laughs> to make sure the phone's far enough away from his body. Because legit, and, he's and, saying it's a cancer risk. And he actually is, like, I sound like I'm making fun of him, but he's extremely smart. Like, yeah. He talks with, like, nuclear physicists and stuff about this mm. shit. And, like, he he has, like, all sorts of different uh, instruments that he uses to test his electronic equipment. And he wouldn't be doing this if there wasn't a biological impact of that stuff on the human body. It's just most of us are too afraid of how silly it looks to be talking on our phone using a selfie <laughs> stick, whereas he doesn't give a shit just because he's... Uh, yeah, he's a, he's that he's Mercola. Yeah, 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 he's, 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 yeah. He's like I'm fucking Mercola. The, yeah, the number one fitness stick, visited so. website yeah, for like the last like fifteen years. million <laughs> visits a day yeah, on my yeah, website. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because I'm the fucking man. He has to be yeah. one of your favorite guys to have talked to. I mean, he was such a treat. He talks to him every week. Oh yeah, we we talk every week. Oh, yeah, do you really? Yeah. Oh no yeah. shit. Oh yeah. So I've, I've, I've yeah. he definitely him and who else were we talking about? Who I could see you really hit. Oh, and Paul Check. Yeah, those two guys. I feel like Check will blow your mind. Those two guys you'll really really enjoy. Different too. The two of them, they're not they're not anything like each other, but they're both God, brilliant, but brilliant minds. I can't help I bet, it. I bet Paul Check deadlifts more than Dr. Mercola. Yeah, I think so, too. I think Way Paul Check might even deadlift more than me. But actually. Dr. Mercola's <laughs> got a longer selfie stick. <laughs> uh, it, God, we, we're living like in a ticking time bomb with all this Wi-Fi and, uh, you know, internet and stuff with kids, you know, with cell phones know. up to their face. There's always the concept of hormesis. You can keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, let's hope, let's hope we, we make it okay. And just radiate your cells into a longer life. Excellent. Yeah, it, yeah, it is tricky. I mean, I'm I'm pretty careful with it. Mm. Well, my friend, it's been a pleasure again. It's always a pleasure. We always have fun with you, brother. And by the way, oh, we are friends now. Yeah. You are one of my best friends now. Yeah. We just, I just brought you in. You're in my Fab Five on my phone now. Can we go fishing? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah we'll go get, we'll get in a yeah, boat. Let's go let's fishing. Well, he's sleeping, he's sleeping over <laughs> tonight. Frisbee. Next time you come over, we'll go get in a boat. I do we're, have a Frisbee in we're my backpack. A, we're having a, sleeping, a sleepover. A and tomorrow morning, tomorrow we're going to work out together. Who's the, who's the big spoon tonight? Hmm? Me, yeah. duh, duh. I'm actually sleeping in Sal's meditation room. Yeah, that's true. Meditation. Room. There's good mojo in there. Good dude. feng shui going on. Very good mojo. It's my meditation slash. They were sex concerned room. I'd need a bed, but I told them I hunt. I'm pretty <laughs> cool with that. Yeah, I have a meditation mat in there, and I'm like, yeah. oh, you know, I don't really have a bed, and he's like, is he's that like, like I sleep on rocks. Is I don't that care. like a yoga mat? No, or you got a little more beef. It's to like it. the Japanese. It's like a Japanese floor bed. You ever seen them? You can roll them out. Mm. I slept on that thing for like. Four months. What are they called, Doug? Futon. It's a, like, it's a, a futon? A f- I thought he was going to say something. Not a futon. It's a futon. <laughs> Sorry, so Doug. I'm going to go. Futon. I'm going to go basically pass out and slobber on Sal's meditation futon all night. And we'll work out Fantastic. tomorrow morning. Work out. Thanks again, my friend. All right. <laughs> Listen, 30 days of coaching. For free, Mind Pump Media. Oh, wait a second. Well, we gotta, we gotta, we're going to do a podcast with B right now on a day like this. We have to plug his bars right now, dude. His bars? Yes, dude. Are your bars re- going to be available? What's he just on? released his bars. They're available as of uh, as of today. Right? Yeah. So tell yeah. people where, where they at to tell them everything right now. Tell them their affiliate code. Tell them what's stuff. up. Yeah, tell them our, we don't even have an affiliate code. He's going to make it right now. Yeah, well, we could probably get you guys some kind of a discount if I get it set up before this podcast comes out. It will have Perfect. a couple of days. Yeah, we'll, you got so a couple we days. could say and and remind me about this, Doug. We'll we'll set up. Uh, I would say about a fifteen percent discount would be Ex- appropriate, exclusive for my. It pump actually fans. would be exclusive. I want I the, want one percent higher than anybody code, else the has. Code will be mind pump. <laughs> yeah, we're, be- we're best friends now. You don't even have a best friend till five minutes ago. You didn't have a best friend. You have a best friend now. The, as a, your first best friend, call. I'm calling on you. I want one percent. Best, best friend. One percent. Fuck up and let me finish talking. <laughs> so the code you is. Took, see, you're not. You do this is not how we work. This relationship. Mind <laughs> mind pump. Uh, here's the deal. I spent like two years taste testing and designing this thing and also testing it. Like I took it to like 38 degrees below zero racing back in Vermont. I put it in my sauna for five hours. I took it on bike rides in Hawaii. It is uh, coconut flakes, cacao nibs, <laughs> uh, coconut oil, a little bit of organic honey, white chia seeds, Spanish almonds, mm. sea salt, uh, cacao butter. It's about 50 to 60% fat, 25, 30% protein. 
about 20 ish percent carbohydrates, kind of like a, a lower, not like a greasy ketogenic bar, but like a low carb, very pale- fat bar. Paleo-esque? No, not paleo esque. I, like I looked at a lot of like the paleo, you mean like the glazed donut paleo bars. I those, saw your video ones. on yeah. that. Yeah, they have yeah. Uh, no, it beaver have, butthole on it. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> doesn't have any of like the like the egg white protein and all the excess. I, I think a lot of bars have excess protein. This one's got a little bit of collagen in it. It's got the equivalent of about a bone, like a cup of bones broth worth of collagen in it, um, and super clean and. Uh, yeah, it, and it tastes amazing. It has. I learned a new word designing it. The organoleptic profile mm. is really good, meaning it's like it tastes really hedonistic, but it's actually really. good Oh, for so you. it hits all. What you what you did is you designed it to hit all of the hedonistic. Uh, I wanted a bar that, that would be guilt free, but also extremely addictive because I hear that's a good business move. Mm. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So what's the code again? Mind pump. Let's go. Let's go. Mind pump. We'll get that set up to get people a fifteen percent discount. Uh, the box is coming. A box of twelve bars. And where do they buy it at on your site? For two hundred and sixty eight dollars. And what? Um, and no, what's your site? Yeah, you you can get it. Uh, you know what should work is uh, bengreenfieldfitness.com slash nature bite should get people there or just look up Ben Greenfield nature bite and you should be able to find it. And if you can't, then I'm going to go fire some people. Excellent. Thank you, Ben. Yeah. Love you, brother. Thank you for listening to mind pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy and maximize your overall performance. Check out our discounted RGB super bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB super bundle includes maps anabolic, MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.